So one of the cool things we can now do with Ecamm is choose to go to multiple destinations at once without going off to a third party tool like Restream. And first I wanna show you how to do that, how to set it up, and then I wanna have a little conversation with you about maybe which channels you should go to and whether you should go to multiple or just stay with one. Some interesting thoughts on that one, hopefully, because I know a lot of people ask me. So uh, first of all, let's look at how do we actually do this and how do we select multiple channels? So we're down at the bottom of our screen here. It says new. If you didn't watch the last video on setting up destinations, do go and watch that one first. And uh, we're now gonna add these in. So hopefully, yep, it's picked up all of our destinations that we added in the last video. So I can literally just go down this. So the symbols, these are my groups. Uh, this is my page. Sorry, this is my personal profile. This is my page, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube. So I could just go down here and add all of these destinations in. And I'm now, when I go live and I put my title description into here, uh, we set this up, we can actually go live. Uh, you'll see that down here, there's an option to actually go live now. And me going live is going to all of these different platforms at the same time. Yeah, fantastic, right? Uh, just to be that visible. Let's carry on down this. We would enter a title. So this would be the title of the live. We would add a description and we do need to put these in. Um, thinking you can change these around for the individual uh, platforms afterwards. So let's just put this in here. Test live. There we go. I'm demonstrating Ecamm's new multi-streaming feature. That'll do. Visibility. Uh, yes, we want this public, not unlisted. Now, there will be times when you just want to, if you were doing a webinar, for instance, and you're keeping it behind paywall or a registration that they've got to register and then you send them over, that's when you would have unlisted. But typically, you'll want this public. You want people to be able to come and join you. And uh, There is cross-posting on here. We haven't set this one up. This just means that um, we can actually go to other people's Facebook pages as well. And then we've got some other options here. On LinkedIn, there's an option to generate automatic captions. Uh, with YouTube, we can choose the latency. I tend to stick in the middle at this low one. Uh, are your videos made for kids? This is not meaning are they safe for kids. It just means is the primary audience kids. So uh, unless you're teaching two children, then you leave that one off. And then Twitter as well has uh, latency on that one as well. Again, I would stick with the defaults on here. Now, if we're just going live, we can hit go live now and the thing will go through. If we want to schedule this, then we can use uh, the little calendar on here. Let's choose tomorrow at 12 o'clock. And as it says down here, when we schedule this, announcement posts will be created on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Twitter doesn't have announcement posts. So we would add an image in here normally, just pick a thumbnail for this. I haven't got one, I'm not gonna pop one in for now. And um, so it tells me down here that because I'm going out to these different destinations, the required speed is 57.6 meg. We've got another video for that, that uh, you're going to see where we can actually play with and test these different speeds that you've got. But it's telling me that I've got 57.6 meg and I get a green little tick, so I'm good to go. So if I schedule this now, Interesting, I just get an error message coming up here then. Error scheduling broadcast. Ecamm was unable to schedule to Adrian Salisbury Training Community. Facebook no longer allows scheduling a live video to a group as a page. I didn't realize that. So remove the destination, re-add it as a non-page linked group or schedule. Okay, so all it's done is remove it for now. I can add that in again. I'll go back and just add that as another destination. But notice that this now down here now, I, I can choose a new live and we could go in again. And if I want to schedule another one, I can just turn off the ones. So like that community, I can turn that off. If I decide I don't want to go to Twitter this time, and actually I want to just go to LinkedIn, Facebook and YouTube, then I do the same again, schedule this one. And I can schedule multiple of these up then. And what you'll find is that in this drop down area here, they will all be listed down as you have multiple lives due but I can go in on each one of these and it says go to the page, copy the URL. So if I wanna be able to send people to this and say, hey, come and join me over on YouTube, let's click this one. I can copy the wait page URL. And just to show you, if I post this in, this is then what you would send out to people 
um, put it in an email or something like that. Now, I haven't put a thumbnail in to this one. We didn't put an image in, but it would show that at the top. And it's telling me that it's live in 26 hours, notify me. So that's really useful if you want to be scheduling these and um, wanting to make sure that people are coming along to see your lives, then um, give them some notice, send out some links to them. Uh, it makes a huge difference. Now, if I want to remove this from the event, so maybe up here I decide, actually, I don't want to go to Twitter. I can just remove it remove the destination and it's gone and it's just canceled it at the other end. Same with Facebook maybe. If I decide I want to remove this, it'll remove it and it'll get rid of the post from Facebook. So you can see this is a really nice editor now, very easy way to, to do this. Uh, if I want to edit the whole thing, I can go in here and I can change the name of this around and it will change it for all destinations. If I just wanted to go in and edit my YouTube video, maybe either I want a different description in there than I do on Facebook or LinkedIn. Well, I can go into this one individually and um, edit the details in there. So very powerful, uh, very well thought through putting these destinations in and you'll see down here that it says I'm going live in one day and it even tells me I'm going to two destinations uh, because that's all we had left. Now I can just delete this and um, it'll take it away and remove the announcements and it's given me a little every every kind of uh, a note that's there it gives me a little prompt so I, uh, linkedin i need to go to the page and manually remove it but um so i can go to the event and we can head over here and we need to manually delete the event so that's actually setting up these destinations. Now I said to you, uh, we would just have a little chat about should you go to multiple? Is it right to load everything in and just um, blitz out to every platform that you can? The way I look at this is where are your audience? And I only go to YouTube, but I've got thousands of people that follow me on Facebook. Might somebody have spotted that I went live on Facebook that wouldn't spot it over on YouTube? Same with LinkedIn. Uh, we're not very strong on LinkedIn. We don't do a lot of work over there. And um, when we multi-stream, we don't tend to get a lot of people show up on LinkedIn. But might there just be those one or two that have recently found us and started following us on LinkedIn that wouldn't know about YouTube and Facebook? So I think there's benefits for sure in going off to multiple platforms as long as you have an audience over there. Because nobody's going to see on YouTube. If you decide you're going to go live to YouTube, you've got a brand new channel, you're going to be really disappointed because nobody's going to get a notification to say that you've gone live unless they're subscribed to your channel. And then the chances of them actually being on or getting that notification to say that you've gone live is quite slim. So in terms of picking up new people, people discovering you and finding you, yeah, stick with the channels I think that um, you're more popular on, where your audience are. I definitely recommend scheduling in advance if you can you know, plan sort of three days at least out in advance and then send emails out, um, put social posts out saying, I'm gonna be talking about this on Friday or Wednesday and you know, come and join me, here's a link. That again is then where you choose the destination. Do you want to send them to Facebook? Do you want to send them to YouTube? There are benefits either way. I kind of like YouTube. I think YouTube is the most stable and consistent as a channel to live stream to. It allows me to go to 4K if I want to as well. I've got fours and against. The, uh, what I don't like with YouTube is that the chat for the live is separate. And uh, then as soon as the live's done and we go to replay, then people go to the comments rather than the live chat. And so, although you can watch that live chat back, I can't go back and comment. Maybe I'm on the live and somebody asks a question that I didn't even spot. I can't go back to them if I went down the comments afterwards and go, oh, sorry I didn't answer this, let me just come back. Now, if it's on Facebook or on LinkedIn, those comments that come in, I can actually go back through those comments afterwards. I can like them and I can individually reply back to Bob and say, uh, sorry, I didn't get to your question. Actually, here's a link to a video I've already made on that. So there's a lot of benefits for Facebook to be able to get that conversation going afterwards or for you to be able to do some work after. If you only plan on doing the live and not going back and commenting or you know, nurturing the, that audience, then then stick with YouTube. You can send your emails to people. It's not a bad way to actually get your YouTube channel up and started if you wanted to. If you've got an email list uh, that you can say, hey, 
you know, we're going to be going live. It'll be over here on YouTube. Come and join us. Here's the link. And why don't you subscribe while you're there? Facebook can be a bit glitchy. There are also other benefits of Facebook. If, for instance, you were running any Facebook ads, you could say, hey, I want to send an ad to anybody that watched 20% or more of this Facebook Live. And uh, you can then send a very targeted email to somebody who watched one of your live videos, live or in replay. Uh, so that becomes a very powerful way to use that. Again, Facebook is a little bit harder to find their old content. People don't tend to go digging back down your Facebook page and watching all those videos. It's easier to organize in YouTube. And um, yeah, I'm finding more and more people are really just starting to go to YouTube itself. In fact, I think Ecamm are doing that. They're not really streaming out to multiple destinations. They're just really investing in YouTube and their presence there. And I can see a lot of sense in that actually of getting people all in one place. Now, one thing I do just want to point out at the time of recording this, if you include LinkedIn and go directly to it from Ecamm, the chat doesn't come back into Ecamm from LinkedIn. So you need to have that window open maybe on your phone or somewhere else because if somebody's chatting over on the LinkedIn Live, even though you're going to the other destinations where everybody else is coming back into Ecamm, so normally you don't need to have other windows open, just the comments and reactions tab in here. We'll pull it in from all the other destinations it doesn't seem to be pulling in from LinkedIn at the moment. But possibly by the time you're watching this, uh, that will have been added in now and all will be good. So have a go at that. I definitely would recommend scheduling the lives, giving people some notice about it rather than just hitting go live and wondering why nobody showed up. Unless you're a celebrity with a, a huge following uh, that are always there waiting for you to appear. Or maybe you go live, but you don't really expect people on the live. You just want them to come and watch the replay. But while you're there, maybe you're at an event or something and it's like, oh, quick, go live, show this. Uh, then, then absolutely. Again, at the time of doing this, I'm not set up on Instagram. It's all very new. So it'd be interesting to see how that works and evolves and how that can combine with other platforms at the same time. Presumably, you're going to have to choose your stream aspect and we'll go portrait rather than wide. Um, who knows? That's to be updated. So there you go. That's how to multi-stream or, or stream. And then uh, in the next video, I'm just going to show you how to prepare for your live stream. Some thoughts, some things that uh, I would just encourage you from my experience that I would want you to think through before you actually hit go live. So if you want to join me in that video, it'll be right here.